only one of the 14 games in this series was undeniably successfully a genuine leap forward for the franchise. It was the first engine change and the only successful engine change of the franchise's 20 year and 14 game history. The greatest step forward in Total War's 20 year history was with Rome Total War. It marked the inevitable upgrade from the sprites of the initial titles into the fully 3D battles we have had ever since, and at the same time into the high resolution campaign map we all now take for granted over the chessboard risk style map of the initial games. A few game elements were dropped, but way more was added, and it stands today and forever as a cornerstone of the RTS genre and of PC gaming and of gaming altogether. It can be stated without reservation to be a worthy progression from the initial Shogun 1 and the following Medieval 1, and it did so by changing theatre again with the greatest ambition to Roman classical antiquity. Just as the Republic was about to burst out from the Italian peninsula in 270 BC, the ultimate stage for a Total War game coinciding with the most ambitious leap forward in the franchise's history. This was barely four years after Gladiator primed an entire generation for a lifetime of sword and sandal enthusiasm. And some of us started even earlier than 2000's Gladiator. Some of us even got hands on with its depiction in video games before Rome Total War came along. It was therefore very important for Rome Total War to be able to capture the essence of ancient Rome and to constantly immerse the player with it all the way through the game. With Rome 2, they knew this full well. The extensive marketing made it very clear. Rome 1 did it the right way, though. You've got the Timeless soundtrack. A soundtrack so good that one of the most popular mods for Rome 2 is the mod that fixes its soundtrack by just completely replacing it with this one. You've got the sprawling Roman cities and their architecture, and the means to go down and look at it whenever you want, thanks to a feature which then immediately vanished to never be seen again in a Total War game. There have been a few of those. Hit the battlefield and you've immediately got the legendary Roman infantry that adorns the cover artwork. As the game progresses, you've got the Marian reformed, fully fledged imperial Roman legions, the iconic imagery of the professional, standardised, disciplined Roman legionary with his Lorica Segmentata and deep red scutum and Toledo steel gladius operating as massive units with advanced formation capability and testudo. The testudo. Forward! Fight! 
as much as the Colosseum or the Triumphal Arch, the Testudo stands solid after millennia as the captivating symbol of Roman prowess, the most recognisable military formation of all time, the iconic blood-red scutum replicated across the ranks and multiplied down the columns for a uniform block that is greater than the sum of its parts and all of it accessible to the player at the click of a button, instantly beginning the transformation of an already formidable fighting unit into something altogether completely different, something transcendent and quite unforgettable. <laughs> One of the formations that the Roman legionaries can adopt in battle is the testudo, or tortoise formation. When they place those massive rectangular scutum shields edge to edge, they make a brilliant defence against arrow fire. When they get close enough to the enemy, they'll bring their shields down and charge. Come on, heroes! If you wanted to put your finger on the pulse of Total War, or any game that tries to do what it does, then this is a good place to do it. And you might have noticed I was focused on this when I was examining the wreckage of Rome 2 after its launch. And also if you watched my last video. The abject brokenness of Testudo on launch, and for a long time afterwards, was extremely viscerally repulsive to me. Yeah, Testudo should be good. The game is called Rome 2. The, the focus of the game is the Romans. So mm -hmm. hopefully they've done a good job on the Testudo. Which is one of the most iconic uh, Roman Roman concepts in modern times, the Tesoro Turtle. And symbolised perfectly what a mess the game was. If they can't get Testudo right in a game centred around Roman heavy infantry, then what can they get right? Rome 2 has since had a lot of patching. A lot of patching. A lot. A lot of patching. And its Testudo is therefore completely different now. Likewise, there have been two games since Rome 2 that had their own Testudo. Attila and Three Kingdoms. That's now four games with Testudo. Rome in 2004. Rome 2 in 2013. Attila in 2015. Three Kingdoms in 2019. I'm going to be looking at all of them and observing their executions carefully. I'll be looking at the evolution or devolution of Testudo in Total War. Let's start with the original, Rome Total War. One of the historical battles in the original Rome Total War revolves entirely around the Testudo, if you let it. At the Battle at Carrie, you're surrounded by horse archers with cataphracts on the way, and your testudoed legionnaires have to withstand the combined arms capability of the supreme Parthian cavalry. If you stand your ground in testudo for this whole fight, you'll get trampled in the open by successive devastating cataphract charges. If you completely neglect testudo for this fight, your superior infantry get gradually picked off by the potent Parthian composite bows. Testudo protects the men using it, but it isn't a panacea that solves all problems. It's up to the player to understand the battlefield and the units and the nature of the Testudo itself. If the player can do all of this, they can win, and Testudo can be a part of this, enriching the gameplay. The moment you gain control, you can break Testudo, Run quickly to the hills behind for a defensible position while your cavalry screen your retreat and drive the horse archers back, and then toggle between Testudo and normal rank and file as you repel the blunted uphill cataphract charges and the barrages from the composite bows, mitigated by the Testudo and the hill they protect. This is Testudo in action. Now, here's how it worked. So now we have equally spaced, alternating facing along the whole length for 10 units. So all I've done is to stood them in this pattern 
and now we see how the AI responds to that. Legionary first cohorts. First cohort. Stand Order in formation. I'm gonna do this while I'm waiting. I'm gonna show how they go into formation. I've already done this before, but so the shields are to the left. Form testudo. Here we go. No. And look at how they push forward to compact the formation. What an amazing touch, holy fuck. And now I'm gonna move them forward a bit. And their facing looks good enough. Alright, so we're taking fire. And they've picked one of the ones that are facing the, the other direction. And we took our first casualty. They're shooting at this one too. It's also facing the other direction. So far they've fired only at the units that are facing the other direction. They're not firing at these ones. They might fire at this one which is on the edge. They haven't yet but they might. All of the losses, all the fire has been on this group which is facing the other direction. Group 1 is rear facing, group 2 is forward facing. Alright we're taking aggro now on this unit. This one is forward facing and it's taking slinger fire but it's not had any losses. Alright, there we go. The first one. A guy dropped on this side and made a hole. And now the entire side moves forward. See how they fill the gap by moving forward? And the casualty was on the side. It wasn't on the front, it was on the side, which might be remarkable as well. Another... more side casualties. And one went down there. And they, pu they pushed forward to fill in the gap. See how they, they move forward and fill in the holes? How it just seamlessly happens like that? And you can see it. See how solidly implemented this is? It's fascinating. Now they're charging. And they've broken out of formation. Alright. And now the casualties really rack up because they're not even in formation anymore. So they're facing the wrong direction. They've been pulled out of formation. So they've been compelled to break to Sudo. Which is an intelligent thing to do for an army of skirmishers. We've still got light losses on this forward facing unit. Are we taking aggro from behind yet? Yeah we are, we are. And this is something they do as well, they try and flank, they get around. See how they've done it on both sides? This one is still forward facing and taking no aggression. So only one forward facing unit has taken aggression. While all of the rear facing Tsudos have taken casualties, some of them heavy. That one will be the first to go. That was one of the rear facing units on the edge, the end of the formation, end of the line. This is a forward facing unit on the end of the line and it's taken a lot of aggression, a lot of skirmishing, and it's still only taking mild losses. Only lost 50 out of 240. And they're gonna start to accumulate losses from the back. The front is impervious. There's only one body that I can see. From the front, it's almost immune, but from the sides, you see how it's susceptible. And from the back, well, you just look at the results of the rear facing. See all the bodies here? It's a lot easier for projectiles to penetrate the formation from behind. Because, of course, the purpose of this formation is that it offers protection, especially from the front. You're advancing into incoming fire. And that encourages a lot, that opens up a lot of tactical gameplay because what you want to do with these units is protect their flanks and rears and support them while they, they're like a breakthrough unit, a tank in this formation, a classical antiquity tank. You need to support them. If they're left alone like this then they'll get surrounded and you'll see skirmishing into the back of them. And then they just drop like flies. See how an entire rank of the back just fell there? It's just a matter of time. But if they are facing the right direction, then these three units... This one's taken no aggression, never mind casualties. Same with this one. And now this one's taken fire. See how they're impervious? Almost nothing is happening. 
Yeah, it's great. Only six casualties on this unit this whole time. And even, even this one's still alive, but they're charging now. And they've been charged. And they're engaged. And they're broken over. The other unit's broken. The one on the end is broken. And they've broken out of formation. They've they've dropped Tesudo and they're engaging in the melee now because they've been pulled out of Tesudo. So this would be the great opportunity for the combined arms. So this one is engaging in the melee, pulling them out of formation, and now these units can combine their arms so they can skirmish into the flank. But they're going to charge and just go for the break. That works too, hammer and anvil. And you see them turning around. They were caught up. Your yeah, now they're broke. nerve has broken, and yeah. he is fleeing from the enemy. So it's really interesting. Testudo is implemented very well. It it's a formation that has advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are very strong when they're used properly. So if you were to put these units in a city with no way to flank them, for example, if you were to put them up against the wall and to pseudo in the face of skirmishers, it would compel the skirmishers to engage in the melee. They would be ineffective. And the AI does react to that in a way that's intelligent. They preferentially target units that have their backs turned. And also, you can see how the way the protection is modelled by the game is, is a solid implementation. Because it doesn't just block all projectiles at all times. It has nuance, it has depth, and that allows tactical gameplay to happen on the edge of that implementation. Like I was saying about putting them in a town. If, if you're going to have an implementation for Tesudo that simply adds 100% to protection from arrows as soon as the button gets clicked to engage it, then that is a really lazy, flat implementation. And the kind of gameplay that can occur with that is shit. It's shit gameplay. There's no nuance, no depth, there's almost nothing that you can be aware of, there's nothing to be aware of, there's nothing to, to play towards or play away from, it's just flat and shitty. You have this system here, with all this depth that I've just laid out and demonstrated, you can even see it, that you can even see the depth in the way the AI plays, imagine how a human could navigate the intricacies and nuances of this system. And he just got dinked on the nut and went down. See how good this system is? This is what every Testudo and every Total War game should have matched and then surpassed even further. There's a big hole in expectation that needs to be acknowledged because this is just... It's, it should be saddening to look at this and see how good this system was and compare that to modern contemporary systems 16 years later, which are shit. I remember I complained in my battle with Sao Sao, the first historical battle in Three Kingdoms, I remember complaining how activating formations was to just do a spreadsheet calculation to add numbers on and take numbers away. Plus 25% melee evasion, minus 15% range block, plus... What the fuck is this bullshit? Holy crap! Why is there not an actual implementation that models what's happening like this? Look at this! Guy gets dinked on the back of the head while the shield doesn't protect him whatsoever and he goes down. No casualties, not a single casualty in the front rank of this Tesudo. Loads of casualties at the back rank of this Tesudo. Why do we not have good systems like these? Look, look at this unit! These two units here have been untouched the entire battle because they are standing in Tesudo against an AI that is at least partially capable of, of acknowledging that. I think we might win this because they ran out of ammo because our Testudo conferred such a protective advantage. This is how you deplete the ammo of the enemy. By making them expend it into sh steel shields, scutums. Why do we have this bullshit in modern Total War games where you're just cheesing the fuck out of the AI to get them to use all their ammo? This is how you do it. I shouldn't have to use Saber Cavalry Militia with 85% range block chance and just kite enemy archers into using up all their ammo. 
I shouldn't be able to just hide my units behind a hill and force the enemy to plunge their fire over it so that I have enough time to dodge it. What is this absolutely shit gameplay? You see how they're trying to implement all of this different weight classes, different speeds of infantry and in Troy, and it never really happens. This is when you can really feel the different weight classes and different speeds. I've got heavy Roman infantry that can't catch these Rodian slingers and Cretan archers, and so they're not even trying to. I can feel the difference in the types of infantry more in Rome Total War of 2004 than I can in Troy of 2020. And they're firing good. What's going on here though? Come on. Come on, turn around. Alright, they're wheeling about. And do you see how there's so many disadvantages to this formation? It's so clunky. So slow. It has such low mobility and, and, and flexibility. But it confers an earned advantage. You earn your protection against missiles with this inflexibility. It doesn't feel like that in Three Kingdoms. In Three Kingdoms, you just click a button and immediately, or well, three seconds later, that's how they do it. They simulate it with a timer, whereas in this game, it just actually happens. Alright, so they're gonna wheel about and then move towards here and then reface. See how they had a good system and all they had to do was make it a bit more slightly intuitive and it would have been great. Instead of just shuffling back to the left a bit, they turn on the spot, reface, and then push forward to the destination and then reface. So now they're going to move over to here and then the whole unit is going to rotate 135 degrees until it's facing the front. Fire from the front. If that guy goes down, it'll probably Units. be over here. March. Still no losses. That's 40 guys firing at us over and over again, to no effect. And they're all gonna route, I think. Still no losses. Yeah, and that just shows. There's no bullshit going on. These guys are not impervious to arrows. In order for this unit to have taken a loss, all that would have been required is for one of these archers or slingers to go all the way around the formation and fire into the back, but it never happened once during the battle. Even though the AI did make a decent attempt to do it, and so every man in this unit survived. They earned their survival with the Testudo, which has strengths and weaknesses and only the strengths were presented to the enemy in all of the situations where this unit interacted with enemy units. And that's exactly what you want. That just happened by accident in this fight, because it was such a big fight, a big complex fight, and this unit alone had a perfect battle. The but enemy army is in flight! Pursue them and drive them from the battlefield! But you could do this deliberately in a city. You would put this unit in a choke point with no possibility for flanking, where it could only come up against skirmishers, and it would have a similarly good outcome, and it would be earned tactically and appropriate, and it would just be spectacular to see happen. And that's what is made possible by a game like this. See if all of these units had a 100% protection from arrows at all times, like in Three Kingdoms, this battle would have been totally different, and it would have been way worse for it. That was the first attempt at Testudo in Total War. That was the first meaningful depiction of Testudo in video games as a medium. And this set the bar. The next attempt at Testudo was the next attempt at a Rome Total War game. In order to understand the progression of Testudo through Total War, you need to understand the progression of Testudo through Rome to itself. It was the first time they had serious trouble with it and had to tweak it multiple times. On launch, it actually reduced protection against missiles. 
it was a liability. I want to put the true area into the hardest part of the fight, the heaviest infantry that I've got. The Studo. Oh, that's cool. The sound when they go into the Studo is really cool. Let's weather the storm, shall we? Oh my god, we're, we're dying. Our guys are dying. Mob. Oh my god, we're taking bad losses, what the hell? Holy shit. We're getting raped up there for some reason. Our general is under attack. Rapid advance, war cry. Maybe on that unit. My god, how have we lost half of that unit nearly? What the hell? It stopped legionnaires from doing their standard shield raising behaviour. So apparently it had the effect of getting in the way of the normal self-preservation behaviour to fully expose the unit to the incoming projectiles due to a complete lack of implementation. It was then jury rigged with a patch in a desperate attempt to habilitate it, which involved causing it to buff armour massively. But because of the way ranged combat was likewise broken, this also did next to nothing. Alright everyone, this is the 17th of September, Rome 2 came out two weeks ago exactly, the second patch also has came out, and I've been playing the game for quite a bit now, and I've been trying a lot of the game features, including Testudo, and Testudo is, as far as I'm concerned, completely broken. So I thought I would make a video doing a reasonably rigorous test of Testudo to try and establish that it is actually broken and have it on video so that I can point towards it whenever some dumbass decides to leave a shitpost on one of my videos contradicting me or declaring otherwise. You look at the Testudo ones, right? Testudo's routing first. The uh, Tosudo is taking more damage to the archers on the the right. Oh my god, the skies are gone. Look, it's almost not made any difference, the Tosudo. 133, 131. It's not gone anything. It's garbage, like I said, it's awful. But they, they've routed almost exactly the same time. Tosudo is absolutely fucking useless, look. It's not, made any, it's not made any significant difference or any difference. You'd be better off running in a massive lane or something. You'd be better off actually attacking rather than Sacrifice and mobility. These guys have. Wait, oh, the armor's jumped up to. 160. Yeah, it goes up to 168. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it does. It boosts armor, but it doesn't do anything. 46 melee defense. Yeah, it does like, nothing. Like, like Testudo's the, routed first. Testudo routed first, and it had like 15 more men at the point of break. That means that. I think you can put that down to randomness, that 15 men. I don't think it actually helped at all, really. <laughs> you can obviously repeat it over and over again, but we're not going to do that. I think this shows that Testudo just doesn't work. Yeah. If, if it works, it shouldn't be significant. It shouldn't be so so minor. That's broken, yeah. Testudo is fucked. Anyone that says otherwise is a dumbass if they watch this video. <laughs> yeah. if, if we overlook something, leave a comment and let us know, but we fucking didn't. Testudo's fucked. I like how it's in the game and it just doesn't do anything. I like how they decided to include it and forgot to actually implement it. <laughs> <laughs> They, they put it in the game, they put the, the animations in, but they forgot to actually make it affect the gameplay. <laughs> but it does slow your guys down, so that's good. At, yeah. at least it's useful for that. It's good, yeah. No one will die in this volley. Now all the health's gone, now they'll yeah. start dying. I'm still not impressed with Tessa though. It's not as it really helps. good as it should be. I think the armour thing actually does work. It's just really, really shit. <laughs> well, they last another 10 seconds before they're out. Yeah. It's nowhere near good enough. Betray, Underpowered doesn't even begin to cover it. It's pretty much useless. There's no there's no scenario, really, in which Tessudo will help. No. We could show that next. We could create that scenario quite easily. Have the exact same test, except both units are moving at oh, their right. full speeds and being shot at. All right. Just to show how bad Tessudo is. Charging down the enemy instead of sitting there and getting shot to pieces. Because after seeing that, some idiot is gonna think it's useful. <laughs> so we'll just show you why it's not. Although when you do hit the testudo button, your armor jumps up instantly, which is the only thing that matters. Yeah, I noticed that. So it wouldn't even matter if you're on formation. You could just get that instant buff, and then <laughs> we should try that. You could just hop in and out of testudo <laughs> for like a split second <laughs> while the arrows hit. Uh, I should run with them both then. With one of them, I should engage Testudo, and the other just keep running. No losses yet on that unit. I'm gonna charge right up to you, then you hold fire with that one. 
I've made it to your archers with 142 men left with that unit. Let's see what the Testudo does now. Because this is the only situation in which I would even try using Testudo. I think, yeah, Testudo is definitely going to take more losses. This is a really good test. This shows that I know. it's better to just charge recklessly at archers that are firing at you rather than ta be tactful and use abilities like Testudo. Look at that, it's so fucking shit. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Still not out of the unit. It's not even close, Tessudo is awful for being offensive. Look, still not there, getting shot to fuck. Do you want to hear the really funny thing? It's ironically called attacking Tessudo. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what you get when you attack with Tessudo, folks, it's fucking useless. Look at them dropping. Yeah. One more volley and then that's it in there, I think. Right. How many men they got stop firing? I think I could get in another couple of volleys. Holy shit, they're round. Nah, 181 men to 142. Well, I think it's pretty obvious what the difference is. 18 losses to s fucking 69. So Testudo is still broken. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they, I think they've patched it to make it, make it slightly better. The studio's getting pelted right now. They're going to route. have almost lost as much, actually. They're getting there. Oh my god, they're getting done. <laughs> you could probably sit and count the arrows that are on each shield, and after like the third arrow hits, the guy dies behind the shield. Look! Yeah. It, it oh! Is. That's pretty much how it works. They've lost more now. A lot more. They're going to lose. They're going to route. Look at that guy's head. Oh man. Guy's got an arrow sticking out his nut. <laughs> <laughs> and they've routed the Testudo okay. that didn't even get up to them. Never mind taking less losses. Yeah, okay, yeah, but I think we've demonstrated it. <laughs> yeah, Testudo is useless in, in real scenarios. They definitely patched the game though to make it better, but it's still broken as hell. I don't know. Well, it's, it's really strange, like, why patch it so that it's still useless? <laughs> I don't know. I would have just left it. You can't break my turtle, bro. My turtle's too strong. You can't break it. You can't break it. No. Look at that. There's just a oh. there's a carpet of dust One on the unit. One fucking volley and they're dead. <laughs> After one oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, this still works, guys. Yeah. <laughs> if that was Rome One, like ten guys would have died. Yeah. <laughs> I bailed out of room 2 after this, so there's a blackout that lasts, what, 15 patches? I arrive back to test it for one final time with the last patch the game is ever likely to get in 2020. Yeah, the goldfish mouse <laughs> movements are still there. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Why do they have not, not have the Tessudo? In the name of Rome! I think all it did on launch was have this modeling happen where they assume this formation and do this animation and this sound that you're about to hear. Prepare to attack! Form Testudo! So this happened on launch, right? And then people like me complained that it wasn't actually helping them. So what they did was they had it boost armor. They just jury rigged that change to boost the armor by what double so this would have went up to about 180 something like that and you can see that in those early gameplay videos but then somewhere between patch three or four and now they've changed it so that it no longer does this armor bullshit see how there's no shields and then if i do this Match. they quickly are presenting their shields in the direction they're facing Move out. And they maintain the forward facing. Match. And I like how I don't have a stupid fucking armor increase. What a shoddy attempt to fucking habilitate it In that was. To roll. And it curls as well, it curves. So they snake towards the destination. There's a pleasantness to it. There definitely is a priority, it seems, on keeping as many shields as possible facing the destination at all times, which is what you want. It means that there's actually a formation that's engaged. The decision to have this formation be engaged is actually being considered by the way the unit moves. Move out! 
See how I can make minor adjustments Marching and order. they maintain the, f the, f the front. That's perfect, that's what you want. March. That's what they, they needed to do. They needed to take Rome 1 system and make it less rigid and mechanical while still preserving all of its properties and behaviours. Because they should be pretty much impervious to projectiles. There's no exposure really. But from the side, the shields are useless. So if this is modelled properly, incoming fire from the front will do next to nothing, while flanking shots will do a lot of damage. And that's different from the Rome 1 to pseudo, because in Rome 1, the only gap was a tiny little hole here behind this guy. But in this game, the only protection is from almost directly head on. The further to the side you get, the less protected, whereas in Rome 1, you were always protected until now, from here. And that made it more high risk and high reward, because you paid more to get more. Shields at the back would be pushed to the front, they would push in, they would compact, and guys on the side would have their shields cover the flanks. It was really compacted. It's interesting that they've changed it so that you don't have that anymore. It's no longer compacted. I didn't really examine the movement mechanics whatsoever back in the day. There was no point. That was all just fucking aesthetic superficial shit compared to the actual functionality, which was that when the unit took fire from the front like this, they all just dropped dead. Shot would bounce off the shields and then the guys holding the shields would just go limp and fall. And it would just be a pathetic, it would just be an absurd pathetic mess. But if we take fire from these Korean archers, and we don't take many casualties, then they've pretty much fixed it, taking no losses yet, but when Rome 2 launched, you could actually tank the first two volleys of archers or slingers and have no casualties, and that's what people would do. They would test to pseudo by putting their unit into to pseudo and tanking a whole volley, and they would observe that no one dies, and then they would assume that because no one died to that volley, that to pseudo worked. And I think that fed into the confusion. But that was actually just the HP system, the repulsive fucking dog shit HP system. Confusing people. And we've got health bars, look at that, it says 100%. So I'm curious, I want to just take only f fire from directly head on. Alright, a guy died at the front, I don't know why he died. Did he take a headshot? <laughs> Have they actually modelled it properly? I remember screenshots of legionnaires with arrows sticking out their heads. Guys should never be dying back here. Alright, they're moving forward. Yeah, see the rate of casualties accumulating? That means the HP system. How are these guys taking casualties? Where are these arrows hitting? And they have the same really over the top animation for when they go down. And we're getting wiped out. The entire front of the unit is just dying. And also you can't make the Tissudo long. It's just like in Rome 1 where the unit can't be stretched out to be wide. It has to deploy in column in historical accounts. It would have this shape. As it is right now, it's vulnerable. It's easier to arrange shields like this and march in protected fashion. When you're gonna fight in a melee or take a charge, you want to be spread out and disciplined organized lines. This is easy to dismantle with cavalry, cataphracts, and get around and outmaneuver. Why haven't they moved forward? On watch! Come on, push forward. Why do you not move forward, man? Strange that they haven't done that. In Rome 1, they always would have pushed forward. They always die at the front first. That makes me think it is a hit point system. There's one there. I don't know why they're not filling in the holes. This is really bizarre. Now they're doing it. Although, what is this? Fuck's sake, they're going diagonal and zigzagging and shit. Strange. 
And this is a big hole as well. I mean, totally exposed there. What's the point in this formation if you're gonna have giant holes like that? And here, it's really strange. But we're taking all fire directly head on. The only fire we've taken has been head on from these Cretan archers. So this is what we want. This should be almost impervious. Almost impervious. I think too many guys are dying. The way they take casualties doesn't seem sensible. It's not... It doesn't seem like a real system. The arrows should be finding gaps in the shields. Look at that. That They're, they're going right through and hitting them in the eye and they're not dying. That is the, the HP system. Fucking smoking gun. Guys getting shot in the head and surviving. And guys' shields getting dinked with stones and just ragdolling and dying. That is when you know you've got an HP system. Because I'm pretty sure these guys that are dying further back here, they're dying because their shield gets hit with an arrow. The shield reduces the damage. The damage takes them below zero health and they die. I think we are dealing with hit point bullshit here. To see these guys here, they should be fucking impervious. Like, see this? None of these guys should be dying. All their vital areas are protected. The shields are doing their job. This is the Testudo. Like, see, see this here? This is Testudo. This is what you want. These guys are not dying to arrows. This is what they did historically and it worked. It fucking worked. I should maybe try running out of Testudo and see how quickly we take losses. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just run at them with this unit. Oh, what the hell? My game's frozen. It crashed. <laughs> Alright, let's see how we do. The Why are the Senate and all Rome are upon us today? Why are these guys not we going into Sudo? Why are they not into Sudo? Look! To Studo, to Studo, no to Studo, to Studo. Praetorian guard! The fuck is this? Why would you not go into Sudo? I've got to check my units around goddamn to Studo, are you fucking kidding me? Why the fuck? Understood! Prepare to attack! Home to Studo! There's just no reason for that. That shit should not be happening. It's fucking bizarre and weird. Annoying shit. Let's see how the AI handles to throw. They're firing at the ones facing them. Look, look, they've got a rear shot here, but they're not taking it. They're firing at this one instead. Look, they're closer to this fucking unit, but they're shooting at that one. The AI in Rome one's better. How fucking sad is that? Have you ever held a bow before? Fuck. If you turn around, you get fucking wiped out. Although, I'm trying to think. Is that because the unit has a direction and it's checking for the direction when each projectile hits? Or is it because the shields actually do something? They should be getting wiped out. What is going on? Yeah, there's something off about this. Like, these guys should all just be dropping like flies. But they're not. They are just not. Are those arrows coming right? Yeah, they are. What the fuck? Why would you shoot over here? Just bizarre behaviour, what the fuck? I would never see strange behaviour like that in Rome 1. Like, see when I did this test in Rome 1? There was never any of that weird bullshit. I can't explain why they're doing this. Look at that, they're still fucking wasting their arrows on that shit. Leave it to them, they're fucking shooting into the flanks. 
Which you have here, you've got a flanking shot on this fucking unit, what the fuck are you doing? Mm, it's fucking annoying. 18 patches. 18 fucking patches. But why did this guy die and not them? You understand? Why did the guy standing here behind the shield die? But these guys here, that are totally exposed, didn't die. <laughs> why can I expect this guy to die next? Why is it that I have that expectation? Alright, start battle. Wait, did they do the thing? It's not seamless putting them into the formation. It's weird, really bizarre. Do I need to micro. Yeah, look, this unit hasn't gone in. It's fucking just weird. It's fucking weird shit. What the fuck? Witty slingers often scratch ouch onto their shot. They also draw dicks on them. And we've got casualties. What the hell? Why have they broken formation? The fuck? So whenever a guy dies on the front, they have to make the entire front rank again. It's very strange. Come on, where's the brace? Come on, brace. Does that mean they're not braced anymore? Because they've taken losses? Why are they dying so fast? Holy fuck. Come on, or kneel down now, kneel down now before another one dies and you have to wait again. Look at that man, what an implementation, holy fuck. So if a guy dies, they have to completely reform the first rank. Why is he doing push-ups? Yeah, there doesn't really seem to be much of a difference between defensive and attacking to Suro. There's just this stuff that happens at the front that makes it different, and also the fact that you can't move it. So this is a static Tessudo more than a defensive Tessudo. Yeah, so they've got a, a mobile Tessudo, and if this was correctly named it would actually be a, a static Tessudo, I think. Strange that it's not. But there we go, full front rank so I can just wait for the first guy to die now. And yeah, see that shit with the standing up, and they, sh they really, really should not do that. I really don't know how that'll affect the performance in a fight, but it's bad. It's really bad. It, sh it just it, it's it's a weird behaviour that shouldn't exist. Also, you can see how they hold their shields out in front. These shields should be protecting these heads. They should all be pushed forward. All of these guys here are separated from all of these guys here. They should push forward. What the fuck? Testudo does offer protection now, it's just, it's still, it, it re remains an effect, a viable target for skirmishing directly head on. You can still do it. Fuck Rome 2. Patch 18, but as Maximus Decimus Meridius says, Good job fixing that after a year, and I don't, um, some slight sarcasm there. It's, it's annoying, because these are the things that would make the game more fun to play after the game had been released. And now that most people presumably have grown tired of the game, it seems... It's, it's a bit sad seeing these changes being made um, too little too late, essentially. But anyway, it seems like it is fixed from what I can see here. So this is how Tessudo is after 18 patches and after everyone stopped caring. At least they can take what they've learned forward into the third attempt at Testudo. Next up is Attila. I didn't play this until this year. This is the last real historical Total War game, and it followed in the immediate aftermath of Rome 2, which was the game that nearly killed the franchise, or actually did murder it. Depends on who you talk to. Regardless, Rome 2 rendered the franchise forever dead in the eyes of a sizable chunk of the fanbase. Attila was to Rome 2 as Napoleon was to Empire, an attempt to salvage an absolute foobar of a situation by redeeming two games at the same time and getting things back on track. 
hopefully they saw my videos analysing Testudo after the launch of Rome 2. Hopefully they know how critical the situation is. Let's see how Attila handled Testudo. I think it's really similar to Rome 2. I think it's been copy pasted over. And stationary Testudo, mobile Testudo. So there's two types, just like in Rome 2. It looks like it's really similar, but instead of just Triarii having the defensive Testudo, the stationary Testudo, it seems to be pretty arbitrarily dispersed amongst all of these units. 40% missile block chance, that's 40% I think, so that means nearly half of projectiles get blocked from the front. So 40 plus 55 is 95. And then you've got these fuckers here. Her Culeani sin Signores. 50 plus 50, so that should be 100. So this is what they did in Rome 2. They would plant their shields at the front, and they would have spears, and it would be an anti-cavalry. But in this case... Oh wait, it does give a bonus against cavalry for some reason. Attack against cavalry and also the mass. And it seems to be more consistent than Rome 2, because in Rome 2, they decide to just ignore you and not go into Tessero. They've all went in. So I'm going to bring them all out and put them all back in. Yeah. So in Rome 2, the Tessero remains fucking buggy as shit after 18 patches, but in this it's a bit better, it looks like. There's no reason not to have this formation. The only detriment is mobility. The only drawback to this formation is the fact that you're stuck, you're planted. I'm going to try the mobile one. Mobile to Sturos. Protectores Domestice. Mobile to Sturo 55 and they have 40. Why the fuck does the mobile to Sturo have 55%? When the stationary to Sturo has 50? 40 plus 55 for 95. That's bizarre. It's really bizarre. Why would the mobile to Sturo confer more of a protective bonus against missiles than the stationary one where they are they have greater ability to prepare and shape the formation. It doesn't have to be mobile. It doesn't make sense. So yeah that that stationary one it's it's the same as Rome 2's Triarii. And I'm gonna do this shit again. Wait what the fuck? Mobile to Studo can be in big long lines. No way. Yes, we stand in oh man. This is the moment when men show their virtue. They can do that? What the fuck? I have no doubts about your worth. How the f Oh my god, look at that. So four four thick. But if I put the unit to be too thick, I can get a too thick mobile to Sturo. Oh my god, that is silly. That is weird and silly. That's a weird system. Something is off there. That's not right. They need to fix that. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I'm still saying that shit. And this game's five years old, taking losses. I, so I could to Studo. No wait. How is how are they in a position? Seeing as they've taken losses, I want them to take more losses so that they have less than the men required for two full ranks. And then I'm gonna to Studo them. All right, which one's taking the most losses? This one. All right. Yeah, look at that. All right, so we're gonna have. Gonna have less than two ranks, okay? Less than two ranks. We're at one thick on the edges. Yep, I've to stood one man thick. Holy shit, one man thick to stood Oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> Everyone to stood 
Testudo. Yours to come I have achieved the holy grail of defensive military formations. I have successfully created a one man thick Testudo. How did I do it? How did I imbue these men with the property of the Testudo? Without the Testudo? I did it. With buttons. Buttons do it. Buttons do everything. Although when you do hit the Testudo button, your armor jumps up instantly, which is the only thing that matters. Yeah, I noticed that, so it wouldn't even matter if you're on formation, you could just get that instant buff and then... You don't need to actually model anything in the game. All you need is to give people buttons and let them press them, and they can do whatever they want. It's great. Believe it or not, these guys are into Sudo. But yep, yeah, look, mobile to Sudo. And where's the stat? Yeah, see, look, look, it's active. So this is the stuff they can do, this is what they're doing. Oh man, it's this number bullshit. We could test that. I could just alternate to Studo shield wall to Studo shield wall. I'm gonna do that, I think. I think I've succeeded at the, the one rank thick to Studo. This is the unit. This is the unit that I put forward into Studo right at the start. And they've taken no losses. Look, they're getting absolutely showered. No one is dying. This makes the number based approach really obvious. Alright, I'm gonna do something here, something interesting. I'm gonna put these guys behind with no formation. They've got more men, okay? More men. But they will take losses way faster because they don't have to pseudo. 140 to 144. Let's see. This one's taking more aggression. Right behind. Right behind. 139, 139 were even. So because these guys have angled their shields down by like 10 degrees more, they are impervious, but these guys are not. Wait, 138 to 142. Alright. So you can definitely see that the guys at the back are taking way more casualties. Excellent missile block chance. How much though? Average missile block chance. So the interface updates. 134 to 130. Yeah, look at that. This is the kind of absurd situations you get when you go for an implementation like this. They're doing the same thing. Pretty much. Over here they definitely are, just look at this. These guys have a better angle for the shield to, with to withstand ranged fire. Yet they are more susceptible. Look, they've got their heads sticking right out, whereas those guys have their heads behind the shield. But the guys at the front have 95% to their, what is it, 75? No, they don't have anything. So this is just 40%. 40% for them, 95% for these at the front. 95%, 40, 40%, 95, 40. And the only visual representation of that difference is the different shield angle. Which these guys with the forty percent? I mean, who would you who would you rather take your chances at shooting? The guys here, oh, goldfish mouth movements. Why can't they all just be like this? Oh wait, I was gonna. S <laughs> oh man. Shield wall to pseudo. So we've got Your orders? 95, 65, 95, 65, 95, 65, and it's gonna be the most absurd on the flanks here. So. The 95% guys will weather the storm, no problem. But any losses they take will be siphoned off of the back as they fill in the front. And then eventually we'll just have units that are one rank thick and the only difference will be the angle of the shield and the angle of the shield will apparently make 
the difference between 5% of projectiles getting through and 35% of projectiles getting through, because that's the 65-95 difference. So, the shield being... Wait, where's the... The boundary between the units? See, I can't even tell the units apart, that's how fucking absurd it is. Alright. Yeah. They look the same though. My god, they look so similar. Are these guys in shield wall? I think they are, yeah. So it's actually visually indistinguishable. I can't tell them apart. They're exactly the same. But these guys have a much better missile block chance. See, we're taking so many losses on that unit already. Because they only have shield wall. This is like in 3k where the divorce between what you see on your screen and what is actually happening is immense. See, like, all the losses are shield wall, but are they only firing at the shield wall? No, wait, we've got under fire. This is interesting too. Are they selectively fire? No, they're not. They're firing at everything. They're firing... Is it uniformly? Are they uniformly firing? Yep, they're firing quite uniformly. Then we're taking no losses here. Decent losses here. No losses here. Decent losses here. None. Loads. None. Some. So look at that. They're right beside each other, but this one is taking way more losses. And the shields are the same. They're exactly the same. This is the only difference. It's only... The only difference between these two units is this one has a rank at the back that has their shields up in there. I'm fast forwarding. We've still had literally no casualties on, on the Tesudos. Zero casualties. Zero. Even though they've taken probably about the same amount of fire. That 95%. Oh wait, first loss. Yeah, this one has definitely taken a lot of fire. Look at that, they've almost burned all their ammo. This one actually has. If I turn this unit around, they'll take losses though, I think. Because I think, unlike Three Kingdoms, there is a directional component. Because there is in room too. Shield walls have been getting wiped out. Tesudos have been almost untouched, unscathed. Ridiculous numbers bullshit going on, and you can see it on the interface all over the place. 25, 25 missile block chance. So that's something that I can compliment about Rome 2's to Sudo at this point. In the, name of Rome. the way that the Tesudo snakes. And if I just make adjustments to the facing, slight adjustments, and the back of the unit can catch up, then you can keep turning the unit. But if I was to aggressively, then around that point, they break shape. They no longer are just snake, they have to totally change their facing. Yeah, they're only protecting from the front. Man, the contrast in this game is so bizarre. Yeah, look at this, they're getting flank shots. Where are the guys dying though? Where are they dying? It's interesting how these lethal killing shots are coming from the front, it looks like. It's the front of the unit that's dying. That indicates hit points. The front is impervious. There's only one body that I can see. From the front, it's almost immune. But from the sides, you see how it's susceptible. And from the back, well, you just look at the results of the rear facing. See all the bodies here? With an organic system that isn't hit points based, you would see guys occasionally dropping at the back. Like a lucky shot gets through and lethally takes them out. But if it's just everyone at the front dying, then that means the hit point damage is accumulating and it's killing them. No losses indicates hit points. No losses here as well indicates hit points. Tiny amounts of damage accumulating over time until they eventually will start dropping would mean hit points. No losses yet over here, none. These guys were getting absolutely wrecked up here. Look at that, they're all, all the 
death is concentrated to the front of the formation. Look at that, they're all, all the dead guys, there's bodies piled up at the front. Two losses here, none there. Now if the casualties start accumulating its hit points, yeah look at that. They're just dying by the volley now. So they were, they took no losses for several volleys, and now they're taking losses. Oh man, they're just, they're getting, look at that, look at that, collapsing, formation's fucking collapsing. Hit points, man, hit point system. It's obvious, fresh, so being into pseudo doesn't get them tired. It's weird how they're rubber banding as they run. It looks really strange. It's like da 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 da. Weird. And this test for facing. And if it works like Rome 2, then that's good. I would be really surprised if it didn't. They fixed it, or they got it right at the very least in Rome 2. They carried over how Rome 1 got it right to Rome 2. So, if Attila was to manage to somehow introduce this as a fuck up, hopefully it's only 3k that has this complete fuck up of just a flat imperviousness at all times. First loss. This one. Oh, the first loss is the forward facing. Oh man. And also the AI is shit because they're firing at the impervious units. AI is shit. It's shocking how Rome 1 can do something so much better on its first try. It's like the, fir the first 2% of the effort they put into skirmishing against formations did a better job than all of the chunks of the next 98%. Is that because they're firing at this unit and then the collateral damage? Because they've just wiped out everything here. I think, look at this, look at that shit, they're fucking shooting at the unit further away. Have they decided they have a better angle on this unit, even though they obviously don't? Are they not thinking about the angle properly because of the way they've had it coded in? Commander, eyes front. I think they've decided they have a more, a more, a sharper angle to exploit on this unit. Even though, look, look at how vulnerable that unit is. Just shots passing through as collateral have wiped out this entire side. Oh man. See if they had been aiming at this unit the whole time, this unit would be gone. But because they're aiming at this unit, they've done more damage to that one with collateral than they have to this one with with actual targeting. It's ridiculous. So far the most damage they've done is collateral. Look, the, the, none of them are aiming at this unit. None of them. None of them. One, two, three, four, five. None of them are aiming at that unit. They're all aiming at this one and ineffective as a result. It's collateral damage that's doing all the work and it's on this unit, not the one they're aiming at. It's just retarded. Like, what the fuck, man? Rome 1 did it better. Didn't he keep saying it? Rome 1 did it better. Rome 1 did it better. Fucking hell. Similar to Rome 2. Definitely sits beside Rome 2 between Rome 1 and 3k. It's like an intermediate. It's different from Rome 1. It's not universally worse because it's more flexible in a lot of ways. The way it's calculated, it's the beginning of what 3k has in Troy, where it's just numbers based all over the place. Numbers that are in your face. At least in Rome 1, you can suspend disbelief, act like it's the shield that's doing everything. The shield's organised defensively that do everything, but in this game it's just obviously numbers, the shields are relevant, just like in 3k. You can see that really obviously when you compare shield wall into pseudo like that. <laughs> so absurd. Alright, well that was Attila. So with Attila, the last ever historical Total War game, you have the first ever explicit acknowledgement of a deliberate spreadsheet approach. This is the first time the Testudo has ever been reducible to mere numbers on your screen, propped up by some animations. This is the first time the separation of the shield from its shielding effect has explicitly occurred. The first time they've given up on trying to immerse the player with their Testudo. 
Three Kingdoms is the most recent attempt at Testudo, launching in May 2019. Testudo and Three Kingdoms launched with the effect of adding 100% to range block chance. Just a flat 100%. They then changed it for patch 1.2, reducing the range block addition to a flat 45% bonus, similar to Attila's implementations. What this meant was that to studo capable units with a basic ranged block ability of between 0 and 50% would benefit differently from entering to studo. 45% ranged block spear guards would see their ranged block chance rise to 90%. Heavy spear guards with their 50% ranged block chance would see it rise to 95%. So medium spears would have 10% of arrows do full damage and heavy spears would have 5% of arrows to full damage. For some reason, it was then changed again, apparently reverted, to grant all units using Testudo a flat 100% ranged block chance. So there's no front and there's no back. And there's big holes all over the place. This is by no means impervious to projectiles. Just look at it. No way. Plus 100% range block chance. So already you've got numbers in your face. That 60% is going to have 100 added to it and it's going to be a 160% range block chance. If I come out and go back in, 60% and then 160%. Even though the formation is broken up, we are still 100% immune to arrows and this is the absurdity of the problem with this number based approach to these systems. And are we going to get back in in time? Yeah we are. So none of those arrows were effective, none of them. They were a waste of ammo. And in this way you can just abuse the AI all day long. So that's five or six volleys wasted. And because this implementation is just a flat 100% to range block chance, there's no longer an interacting system between the formation and the units that would attack it. They're basically invisible to one another. Look at, And then you have situations like this. Some of them have no shield. Why do some of them have no shield? Do shields break? Look, we've got 160%. See all these numbers here? I think this is one of the worst things that's happened to Modern Total War. Even if this existed with Rome 1, it wasn't in your face, it was back end, you couldn't see it. But at the same time, it looked like the Testudo was a product of the shield positioning of your legionnaires. In this game, it's very obvious that the position of the shield is irrelevant. It could not be more fucking obvious. I'm gonna put a corner towards the unit that's firing at me. And the corners have big holes in them, you can see it easily. We've still got 213 men, even though we've been running around like this the whole time. It's a dead situation with no tension. It's cringy. There's no tension whatsoever. I'm actually just having my eyes glaze over and I'm sort of dazing off at the moment. Because I know that there's nothing actually happening. They're just wasting their ammo. Which they wouldn't do on, on higher difficulties, but the fact that normal is the intended gameplay experience and stuff like this happens, it just shows you 160% ranged block chance. Formation gives you 100% to your ranged block chance, and then you have situations like this. I mean, I can actually see the arrows going into the fucking formation. The formation is not effective. And if this was in Rome 1, we would have taken losses, arrows would have found their way through the shields and done some damage. There's another unit joining in. But because 
there isn't any actual physical modeling happening. This is the price that you pay for having your shields all spread it out like this. There's no front of the formation, there's no back of the formation. That was really important with row 1 I think. The shields would be concentrated towards the front and the front would be presented to the enemy. The formation could be countered by the positioning ability of the enemy overcoming your own ability to react to it and support. So there was an interplay, a complex interplay between all the units. But because this is such an oversimplified system, that just completely kills all tactics and gameplay immediately. There's just 100% at all times, from all directions, in all circumstances. There's no consideration whatsoever for turning around. There's no consideration for moving. You can see the formation has just totally fractured. They should be dropping like flies. They should be dying right now. This is awful. This is the decision you've made to run, to cover, to safety, to get out of this unwinnable situation where you're doomed to death. But that isn't what this is at all. I'm simply moving imperviously through all arrows. And yeah, it's just a... It's a bad system, a bad implementation. You're not engaged, you're not thinking about anything, you're, you're not weighing anything up, you're not trying to make any decisions, there's no variables involved that matter. It's very bad. Rome 1 had it way better 15 years ago. Oh, man. To Studo in Total War has now become and been confirmed as a completely digital delayed effect ability that confers immunity while active. The spreadsheet approach to combat has been completely resigned to and the link between what's on your screen and what's actually happening has been completely severed. To Studo and Total War is now an unhockeyable magic button. You faff around on the interface with your mouse to find a button which only exists if a high level strategist is present and then, after a timer ticks down, an instantaneous 100% imperviousness is bestowed on the unit. It's hard to imagine how it could be any worse. When I returned to Total War after a 5 year hiatus in 2019 with Three Kingdoms, it took me 15 minutes into my first video talking about Total War my first real Total War video in five years to bring up this problem. And I'll just play what I said. Getting out of Wedge, because Wedge slows us down. And it reduces our armor and stuff as well, it's weird. I'm not sure how I like these abilities and formations and stuff. I don't think that's how it should be implemented, like... Why would going into a formation increase our mass. That's not how it works. It's kind of like with the formations for infantry, like range block chance if you go into a, into a shield wall, just because what well, it adds a number on, it should be. I don't like these numbers that are just being added on as multipliers. It should be something that physically happens and gets modelled in the game, like they should actually raise their shields up and that should be from where the block chance is derived. It shouldn't just be a fucking number when you toggle on ability. Suppose we can't model that shit yet in Total War games, oh well. When this franchise, Total War, returns to ancient Rome, it'll be very interesting to see how its distudo compares to the original of Rome Total War from 2004. If Total War has any life left in it whatsoever, and any hope for its future whatsoever, it intends to one day. And when it does, It'll be very interesting indeed to see how its Testudo compares to the Testudos of the past. Where it sits on the spectrum from Rome Total War, its first and best attempt, to Three Kingdoms, its last and worst. If you have any other game mechanics or systems that have completely fallen off of the cliff and that resign your gameplay to being objectively inferior to the gameplay that was possible decades ago, then leave a comment and I'll be fascinated to read about it, and may even analyse it in depth like I have here. Also, 
The Reddit thread for this video series continues to gather suggestions and I'm considering all of them. It's been interesting to read what you all think, so keep posting and I'll keep reading. Also, the situation with criticism of Total War games being immediately downvoted into oblivion on the Total War subreddit is very slowly improving, but I'm still banned from there and threads about me and my videos presumably are still being deleted unless they're there to assassinate my character. So if you'd like a subreddit that reliably talks about Total War and the ways it should be getting talked about, then feel free to join mine. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time. If you appreciate my work and would like to support it, I have a Patreon page. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, The Rory 451, Halsein, William Ballangari, Robert Sparks, and Dake.